Hi, right, welcome back to this second hour of Focal Point on AFR Talk, this Tuesday edition, post-holiday edition. Just a programming note on Thursday. I think a lot of you remember that back in 2010, had an accident on my scooter, broke my hip, had three screws inserted into my hip. Uh, they've started to bother me. I think they're starting to back out a little bit. Went and had an x-ray done. Looks to me like they're backing out just a little bit. There's some kind of bursa sac they may be backing into, some inflammation there. I'm just going to go in and have those uh, puppies taken out on Thursday. Uh, the doctor told me, hey, look, I'm just going to go in there with a Craftsman screwdriver. I mean, he's <laughs> just going to take like a like the same screwdriver you have in your toolbox in your garage. He's going to take one of those out. I hope it's a little cleaner than the one that I have in my toolkit, but he's just going to make the incision. I'll be under general anesthetic. He's going to pull those three uh, screws out. And part of the reason I'm getting them taken out is I think it was starting to affect my uh, golf game. Just that twinge and the tweakage I'd get in my right hip on my backswing when you have to transfer your weight to that right leg was starting to bother me. I said, man, that's, you know, it starts to mess with your golf game. That just gets to be, you or can't ignore that anymore. That's just like serious stuff at that point. So we're going to go in. In fact, I saw the doctor when I went in to set this thing up, and and he was just kind of laughing about the fact that I was doing it because it was interfering with my golf game. And and uh, I said, so so uh, if if the surgery, if going under the knife and having you take these screws out, if it doesn't help my golf game, do I get a rebate? Do I get my money back? And I uh, can guarantee I did not get anywhere with that particular line of attack. But anyway, that'll be on Thursday. Uh, Dr. Gina Loudon, who's filled in so capably for me before. I know this audience loves her, very popular guest host. She'll be sitting in for me on Thursday, and I hope to be back in the saddle on Friday. One other thing on this environmental lunacy, this is from the state of Virginia. Do you know they've banned the charity car washes in Virginia? Remember, uh, youth groups have charity car washes. You have cheerleading squads. They have uh, car washes. Uh, Young Life have charity car washes. Those have now been banned because of environmental regulations for stormwater and water runoff. It's just, that, it's just ladies, that's just insane uh, stuff. It's ridiculous. It's absurd. There's no reason for it. Just completely out of control. Uh, just before we go back to the phones, 888-589-8840. Uh, you may be familiar with singer Tony Braxton. Uh, and poignant comments from her about an abortion that she had in 2001. She's 46 now. She had an abortion in 2001, and she says this, In my heart, I believed I had taken a life, an action that I thought God might one day punish me for. You know, so here's a woman. I don't know what kind of financial situation she was in in 2001. I don't follow music that closely. I don't know if she was a big star in 2001. But just assume for the sake of argument that her career had already taken flight. So she was a woman that did not have any financial worries. Uh, she was in a, a position where this didn't uh, represent some kind of emergency for her. She didn't know how she was going to be able to take care of this child. She made a deliberate choice to pursue abortion, most likely for reasons of convenience. And yet she was troubled by that. She knew that this was the taking of a human life. She knew that. That law that was written on her heart said, look, this is taking the life of an innocent baby. And she has since, she had a son subsequently then was born with autism. At first she thought that that son was a punishment from God because of her abortion. That's how much it affected her thinking. Now she's come to recognize that her son is a precious gift uh, from God. But it's just a reminder don't let don't let people fool you about the abortion issue and and uh, you know if you're, you're a woman and you're listening to this program and you're you're ever faced with that decision, I just want to urge you don't kid yourself, don't lie to yourself about what about the decision that you are considering and getting ready to make. That is a baby in there, it's a human life, and you know it in your heart of hearts, uh, you know it. And if you've gone through with a decision like that and now you are regretting it, I, I want to assure you that there is forgiveness at the foot of the cross. You can be forgiven for that sin. That sin can be covered with the blood of Christ, and that will always be there. The, the memory of that is never going to go away. The, 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 the burden that you may carry for that may never go away, but you can be released from the guilt and the self-condemnation and look forward now to using that painful experience to help others by coming to the foot of the cross. 
Here's a great story. Uh, Planned Parenthood, by the way, sending a letter out saying God is just fine with an abortion. They got a letter from a bunch of these uh, liberal clergy saying God's just fine with you having an abortion. He's with you. He's on your side. He supports whatever decision uh, you make. So that's Planned Parenthood now invoking God on behalf of the abortion choice. Now, here's a great story. This is an encouraging story I want to tell us before we go back to the phones about a California woman who gave birth to a healthy baby. Here's our winnable war moment for the day, and this is just an amazing story to me. Yesterday, doctors at the University of California San Francisco Medical Center performed a successful cesarean section on a woman in a coma. The medical team handed the baby boy named West Nathaniel Landy over to the father. The situation was bittersweet. Brian Landy held a healthy baby, yet his wife, Melissa Carlton, wasn't conscious to welcome her child. As happy as I am to meet my son, it is incredibly painful for Melissa not to be awake with me for this, said Landy, who works as a Santa Cruz County Sheriff deputy. Uh, the baby was born 5 pounds, 9 ounces. He's got his mom's nose, his mom's ears, and he's opening his eyes and looking around already, Landy told KTVU. Carlton went into a coma when a benign brain tumor caused a seizure that knocked her into a coma. Carlton learned about the tumor when she was pregnant and started suffering from bad headaches. The soon-to-be mom decided, this is the part that, that I think is poignant, the soon-to-be mom decided to hold off on surgery to remove the tumor until after delivering her baby. In March, her state became severe, she could barely walk from the parking lot to the hospital doors on a trip to see the doctor. The next morning, she had the seizure, underwent emergency surgery. Carlton's injury is in the part of the brain that controls wakefulness, and doctors suspect she's aware of what's going on around her. She has opened her eyes, squeezed family members' hands, and moved her lips during a kiss. On the day of the C-section, Carlton's father said her daughter started to become more aware. In a few tender moments, she reached out to Brian, took his cheek, pulled his cheek down to her face, and held it there. It was the first time she had hugged Brian since this trauma happened. So that's a reminder that there may be a lot more going on with people that are in a coma, maybe than we, uh, we, we want to think. But a beautiful, beautiful story about a woman who was willing to lay down her life literally for her unborn child. She knew it was a baby. She was willing to take the ultimate risk for the sake of that baby. She didn't want to do anything that was going to endanger uh, that baby's opportunity uh, at life. So praise God for her example. And Father, we pray for your blessing over this woman. We pray for recovery for her. We plead the blood of Jesus over every place in her body that's affected. We pray that you would heal, that you would store or restore that you would purge of illness and disease and restore her to health, restore her to her family and to her newborn. In Jesus' name, amen. Focal Point, AFR Talk. We'll be right back after this. Stay with us.